This video lesson activity is to help you put together a visual to use in conjunction with your PowerPoint with information on the periodic table. <clears throat> so you'll need your periodic table along with the colored pencils provided. We're going to start by first tracing a staircase beginning at element 5, boron. Call this the staircase. It separates metals to the left of the staircase. Any element found to the right of the staircase is a nonmetal. There is only one exception. The element number 1, hydrogen, is the only nonmetal found to the left of the staircase on the metal side. Elements that fall near the staircase possess some properties of both metals and nonmetals as they are near the transition point. The element boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony, tellurium, and astatine are considered metalloids because they possess properties of both metals and non-metals. The periodic table has seven horizontal rows known as periods. Simply by finding an element and noting its period we find that the elements 57 through 71 and 89 through 103 come from within period 6 and 7. So the bottom block at the bottom of the periodic table is a continuation of periods 6 and 7. By knowing the period, we can tell which energy level, level the outermost or valence electrons are located on. Valence electrons are of particular importance because these are the elements, or excuse me, the electrons involved in chemical reactions. For example, if we take the element manganese, we see that it is located in period 4, so its valence electrons will be located on the fourth energy level. Similarly, element number 82, lead, is in the sixth period, so its valence electrons would be found on energy level 6. The periodic table also has vertical columns known as groups or families. Elements that are in the same group or family have similar physical and chemical properties. There are 18 vertical columns, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way across through 18. We also have some other special names for different parts of the periodic table. If we look at groups 1 and 2 and 13 through 18, they are collectively referred to as the representative elements. These are the more common elements as we find them. The box made of groups 3 through 12 are known as the transition elements. The two bottom rows, which come from inside the periodic table, they are a continuation, simply put there for convenience so that the periodic table is not too wide, 
These are referred to as the inner transitions with the upper row starting near lanthanum as the lanthanide series and the continuation of period 7 as the actinide series. Many elements in these two groups, or excuse me, two um, series are radioactive. Some of the groups or families have particular names. Group 1, just the metals, so lithium through francium, are known as the alkali metals. You may find it helpful to color in the families in different colors to help you learn and remember the names. Group 2 are referred to as the alkali earth metals. Group 15, the nonmetals, are known as the nitrogens. May help you remember the P and the N, nitrogen and phosphorus, are located in that family. Group 16, starting with oxygen, are known as the chalkogens, again, the nonmetals. Group 17 are referred to as the halogens. Group 18, known as the noble or inert gases. And the last group with a particular name is group 11, copper, silver, etc., known as the coinage metals. If we come back and again look at the representative groups, so groups 1, 2, and 13 through 18, and just look at the unit value in each group, we see we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Looking at these numbers, we can tell someone the number of valence electrons found on the outermost level. So for example, magnesium is in group 2, would have two valence electrons on energy level three. A reminder, the period tells us which energy level <clears throat> would be the outermost one. Looking at another example, strontium, also in group two, would have two valence electrons. So we see that all elements in the same family always have the same number of valence electrons. However, magnesium's valence electrons were on energy level 3, while those of strontium would be on energy level 5, as it is in period 5. Using tellurium as another example, it is in group 16, so unit 6, 6 valence electrons on energy level 5 because it is in, on period 5. If we looked at krypton, element number 36, it is in group 18. It would have 8 valence electrons on energy level 4 since it is in period 4. The last pattern we want to identify on our periodic table is that of oxidation number, which is just a fancy name for the typical ionic charge elements would possess. 
The pattern goes across the representative elements. Elements in group 1 form plus 1 ions. So lithium would be a plus 1 ion, potassium a plus 1, as well as francium a plus 1. Any element in group 1. Group 2 always a plus 2. So beryllium through radium always form ions with a plus 2 charge. The rest of the pattern is not as fixed as groups 1 or 2. We are talking about a generality. Elements in group 13, a plus 3. Group 14, plus or minus 4. Group 15, minus 3. So nitrogen minus 3 would be the ion. ion. Oxygen, or I'm sorry, group 16, minus 2. Oxygen would form a minus 2 ion. Group 17, minus 1. And our noble gases in group 18, 0. They want to stay as elements. They very rarely form any kind of ion. The metals in our transition area as well as the metals that go up through, up to the edge of the staircase, do not have a fixed oxidation number pattern. They form multiple oxidation numbers, and we'll look at how they are named a little later in class. So we'll end there. Can now use your periodic table along with your PowerPoint to have a better visual to help you understand the different notes.